we want to now have a look at linear patterns when we have discrete data. Now discrete data is talking about when we've got count data. So if I'm counting a number of objects, so if, say for example I've got um, my pens and I'm counting the number of pens. I can't have half a pen, I can only have a whole number of pens. So that's an object, that's what we call discrete data. Okay. So let's have a look at a particular pattern to start with. So in pattern number one, and this is in the same one in your book, it starts with four circles in the center, four buttons in the center, and a button on either side. Then we go to pattern number two, and it's still got the four buttons at the center, and now and the patterns on the side, and now it adds another one on each end. Pattern number three takes the four buttons at the center the two patterns on either side and adds another one to that. So this is what we want to first of all turn this information into a table. So our table is going to have our pattern number and we're going to call this N. Okay. And we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we're also going to have our the other things. We've got our pattern numbers, and we we're also talking about the number of buttons that we had. So it's the number of buttons. Um, and let's call this capital B. So pattern number one. So that first pattern, how many buttons are there in total? There's six. Pattern number two, how many buttons are there in total? Eight. Pattern number three. How many buttons in total? We've got 10. So if we were then to draw pattern number 4, how many more buttons would we add? We'd probably add one to each end, wouldn't we? So that means we'd now add on two more, up to 12. So what we're doing is we're going from 6 to 8, we are adding 2. From 8 to 10, we are adding 2. From 10 to 12, we are adding 2. And the two that we're adding on, so going from pattern one to pattern two, the ones that we're adding on are the ones at the end. Pattern number three, we're adding these ones at this end. So those are the ones that we're adding each time. So number five pattern, if it was the fifth pattern, we'd have 14. The sixth pattern would be 16, and so on. So if we're now going to turn this into a little graph, and I'm not going to do a complete accurately one because I haven't got my grid. So this is just a good sketch. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need to start at, um, at one needs to start at six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So pattern number one, there were six buttons. So I'm going to go up to where one and six meet and that's my coordinate. Pattern number two had eight buttons. So pattern, I've got my pattern on this side, so there's my pattern in, and on this one axis I've got my number of buttons, which is B. So but pattern number two had eight buttons. Pattern number three had ten. Pattern number four had twelve. Pattern number five had fourteen and so on. Okay, so there's our pattern as a graph. What I want us to do now is our next step is to be able to find the equation for this. So I know that I'm going to have, I'm calculating the number of buttons based on what pattern number I've got. So I know the equation is going to be B equals something to do with N plus or minus some other number. So what we need to do is figure out, well, we're adding two on each time. So that means each type pattern number, I'm going to put a two in front of that n, because that's how much I'm adding on each time. Then I need to figure out what the constant is. So this is talking about where it cuts through my y-intercept. So if I if I was to extend this backwards, we, in my graph's not very accurate, where would it cut? And so what we do is we essentially think about, okay, what if I had pattern number zero? What would pattern number zero look like? So in our patterns here, so remember, going from pattern one to two, we were adding on these, 
pattern two to three, I was adding on the ones at the end. So say I want to go from pattern number one, I want to go back to pattern zero, I would have to remove those and I'd be left with those four patterns in the center. So it's the same as me saying six and take away two is going to give me four. So the number, the constant, is four. So that's where pattern number zero would be, we'd be cutting through the axis there at four. So there's our equation. Okay, now we want to use this equation. And we want to use this equation first of all, it's asking us to say if we wanted to, so it's saying how many patterns, so how many buttons, sorry, how many buttons in the 20th pattern. Okay, so when we're talking about the 20th pattern, are we talking about B or we're we talking about N? So remember, B is our number of buttons and N is our pattern number. So we're talking about the 20th pattern, so we're talking about N. So that's telling us N is equal to 20, and we want to find how many buttons there are. We want to find B. So we've got our equation, B equals 2N plus 4, and I'm going to substitute n equals 20 into that equation. And so that's going to, so in place of the n there, I'm going to replace that with the number 20. So the number of buttons, 2 times 20 is 40, plus 4, so the number of buttons is 44. And we write that in a little sentence, 20th pattern has 44 buttons. Okay, so that's if we're given the pattern number and asked to find the number of buttons. Now what about if it's the other way around? What if we are told we want to know which pattern has 92 buttons in it? So what would the pattern number be? So this now, the 92 buttons, that's telling us B is equal to 92. So the number of buttons is 92. And I want to substitute that into that same equation, b equals 2n plus 4. And now I'm trying to find out what our pattern number is, what n is equal to. So I'm going to replace that b with the number 92. So 92 equals 2n plus 4. So what do I do first? Adding or subtracting a number, deal with that first. So let's take that to the other side. So 92 and it's plus 4 becomes minus 4 equals 2n. 92 take away 4 is 88. So 88 equals 2n. And now I'm just going to flip those upside down and get 2n equals 88. I'm nearly there. I want to get n by itself, so I need to get rid of the 2. The opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and that will leave me with n equals 44. So what does that mean? That means that is our pattern number, so the, the 44th pattern has 92 buttons, and that's our sentence. The 44th pattern has 92 buttons.